I start this uh, session, technical session by inviting Dr. Sunil Mukhi to tell us large projects in high energy. Sunil. Uh, about the subject. So this is my backy page. And here you see the CNS detector at CERN, compact neon, neon solenoid. This is the real thing. And here you see the India-based neutrino observatory uh, detector, which is, uh, however, a simulation. That's a slightly sad story, which we'll come to uh, in a few minutes. I want to thank Rohini and also Saurabh and Simon for helping me with this time. So what are the goals of mega projects in high energy physics? Uh, usually stated as study of fundamental and also composite particles. These are some of the current detectors uh, and class of experiments that do this. Uh, and these are the fundamental constituents of all matter and they are some of the building blocks, basic building blocks of nature. But these experiments also study hot and dense matter like quark gluon plasma, uh, for example at the relativistic heavy ion collider and at ALICE. Uh, the goals of High energy physics mega projects are to discover and study the ultimate constituents of matter and also how they bind to each other. Uh, but the second goal, which is now growing and is not so much talked about, but it's very important, is to study laboratory big bangs. So this hot dense matter replicates the state of the early universe. And this will give us insight into what the early universe was doing beyond what we can do from astrophysical probes. Familiar equation, maybe it's the only equation in my talk. I think all good talks should have only this equation. Uh, means that to produce a heavy particle, you need a very high energy. Although as Seema pointed out, uh, if the particle is light and its decays are very rare, then also you need very high energy. And to have a very high energy collider, you need a very, very large size to accelerate particles. And the current size is 27 kilometer circumference on this Large Hadron Collider in CERN at Geneva. And this kind of thing cannot be done by one country anymore. That era is over. It has to be done by multiple countries, uh, both in terms of finance as well as the scientists and staff who work on it. Now, there's one exception. Neutrinos are incredibly light. And uh, they are abundant in cosmic rays, at least some species. And they are also produced in reactors. So for this, you don't really need to set up an, acce you don't set up an accelerator to make neutrinos. Uh, what you want to do, however, is to detect them. Uh, this room is full of neutrinos, but we can't detect them. They just interact too weakly. Uh, so we need very large detectors to amplify the probability of a detection. And the sizes we are talking about, for example, in the INO, which I'll briefly discuss, are 50 to 100 kilotons. Now, it sounds, uh, at least to somebody naive like me, that 50 to 100 kilotons is something you could put in the middle of this auditorium if we take people out. But actually, in weight, it's about 1,000 times the weight of a Boeing 737, so it's pretty heavy. Uh, I apologize for showing you a non-Air India aircraft without <laughs> ministry permission. Now, what are the key goals? Are to discover and understand dark matter, matter-antimatter asymmetry, which tells us why the universe evolved the way it did into one that predominantly has one type of species and not the antimatter type. Neutrinos, their masses and mixings. Mixing is a very interesting feature that neutrinos especially exhibit. The hierarchy problem, which has to do with why the Higgs particle is the way it is. And its resolution, which is proposed via supersymmetry or extra dimensions or some as yet unknown mechanism. Uh, the entire structure of the Higgs particle, so one Higgs particle is known, there could be more, and more generally the details of how electroweak symmetry is broken. These are all some of the stated goals of mega projects in high energy physics. And there's one more goal, which is anything we didn't think of so far. Now, you can't really build or justify an accelerator with this last thing as your goal. So, of course, these are primary goals, uh, but uh, experimentalists are always watching out for something new, and we call this new physics. This annoys people who are in different subjects of physics, as if their, sub their physics is old. It's not like that. New physics really means anything that really wasn't sort of clearly planned or clearly understood or clearly discovered before. So, we are always looking out for new physics. Now, there's another set of goals or benefits, uh, which uh, are called collateral, which I'll call collateral benefits. And this uh, slide in particular is inspired by a talk that Rohini Godbole gave uh, recently. 
Uh, so these four I've taken from her, uh, from her, this is her sort of description. Uh, what does high energy physics, what does a high energy physics stimulate beyond discovery of particles and study of their properties? It stimulates theory. Theory needs input from the experiment and sometimes new tools, in particular computational tools, but also analytic tools come out from these experiments. The development of detectors, so deploy and create new expertise in advanced materials and electronics. Uh, accelerator science, so detector and accelerator science are very different. One is how you detect the particles, the other is to build this ring which accelerates uh, particles, which is a superb project of precision engineering involving superconducting magnets and so on. And then, of course, the amount of data that comes out, for example, from the LHC, uh, people have given all kind of estimates like if you wrote one CD, if you wrote them on CDs, you would have to stack them from here to the moon or something. It's just monstrous, very hard to imagine. So it stimulates developments in big data and machine learning and uh, new tools and techniques come out from there. This is not, by the way, a complete list. This is a general class of things. In the end of my talk, I will actually show you a list of what the US Department of Energy considers to be the social benefits of high energy physics. And I think this list is extremely important and uh, uh, because many uh, negative discussions about high energy physics in the 1990s, one of uh, which, as you know, probably led to cancellation of the superconducting super collider, uh, had all kind of letters to the editor and articles, some by real physicists, some by non-physicists, saying that this science is of no conceivable use to anybody. And I think that is just the, the, the most nonsensical thing ever stated. Now, historically, I don't have time for this much, but let me mention it. Though he was a theorist by training, Homi Bhabha led India into experimental high energy physics research. And one of the spectacular uh, uh, results of that time was the first detection of cosmic ray neutrinos at the Kolar gold fields. And this is the uh, heading of the paper. And you can see MGK Menon here, VS Narasimham, uh, B.V. Srikantan. So these two former directors of TIFR and these people, as well as a collaboration from Japan and the UK, 1965. Now, another experiment which was very interesting and yielded an important but negative result was proton decay to determine whether grand unified theories have any chance of being correct because these unified theories predict that the proton is actually unstable with a very, very long lifetime. Unfortunately, within the ability of this experiment, it showed that proton is stable within that lifetime. Proton could be unstable, but the lifetime would be longer than whatever this experiment could measure. Now, other experiments where India has been involved are the LEP, uh, the L3 detector at LEP in CERN, that's the precursor of the current uh, accelerator in CERN. The D0 experiment at Fermilab, which discovered the top quark. And Bell in KEK, which is sort of ongoing in the sense that Bell is completed and Bell 2 is supposed to start. So I won't go into details, but these are all experiments where India has contributed importantly. And of course, uh, now we come to the Large Hadron Collider, which is one of the main mega projects in the, in the world in high energy physics. It's at CERN. At last count, there are 16 institutes in India involved in this. To be involved means you have to be a member of the collaboration, and the collaboration is CMS, uh, Compact Muon Solenoid. This is the collaboration that discovered the Higgs particle, along with another collaboration called ATLAS. The five old members are basically TIFR, Saha Institute, BARC, uh, Delhi University, and Punjab University. And uh, many more have been joining in recent times. ISER Pune is one of them. We are full members of the CMS collaboration. Uh, there's ALICE at the, uh, the same collider has a heavy ion experiment, so that's ALICE. Uh, then there's Brookhaven National Lab, which has RIC, and people are involved in that. And then there's Bell 2 at KEK. Okay. So these are some of the projects that involve India. And I think I should throw out this little detail that uh, the discovery paper uh, coming out from here uh, for, the C, uh, for the Higgs particle did have a significant presence from Indian institutes. So many members of these, all members of the, the joined institutes, whatever were members at that time, are co-authors of the Higgs discovery paper. Now, this may seem like, um, you know, we were just part of something, but I can tell you it makes an impact. Uh, 
Uh, in ISER, for example, the student, undergrad students were really shocked to find that the person teaching them undergraduate electrodynamics was a co-author of the Higgs discovery paper. They actually didn't know till I told them. And somehow in India, this kind of information doesn't seem to spread the way it should. I not understood why. Now, there's the India-based Neutrino Observatory, which is a sort of unique high-energy mega project of domest domestic origin and location. So it's to be located in India, and it's conceived in India. Of course, like any project, it will be international in the way it works, and that's why it's called India-based and not Indian. There's a difference. It's in India. It doesn't mean that it's for Indians only to work. Okay. Now, uh, some numbers. So the CMS collaboration at CERN costs the government 80 crores for five years, order of magnitude, and next projected amount is similar. Uh, if you see, these are, this is not like some astronomical sum of money. Uh, there's always a fear that high energy is very, very expensive. Uh, I will quote a dean of uh, TIFR Natural Sciences faculty saying that high energy was one of the cheaper departments that he had to allocate funds for. So you may keep that in mind. Associate membership of CERN is a new thing. Uh, this happened, went into effect just a year ago. That costs India 40 crores per year, but this is not something that really has been done for primarily for the science community. But for this reason, Indian industry will now be entitled to bid for CERN contracts, which will allow it to work in areas of advanced technology. So make in India will get a boost. And Shekhar Basu, the chairman DAE, has actually said that this 40 crores a year is a very small investment for what we hope to get back to industry. INO, of course, is a new project. A new project is more expensive. This is the cost estimate of INO based on completion two years ago, which hasn't happened, as I'll briefly tell you. So these are just some numbers. There could be more. Now, uh, I'll spend one minute. I have three. I'll spend one of these minutes uh, going through the timeline of INO because it is a story that's very disturbing to me personally and to many people in the audience. I don't want to say who is at fault or what is at fault, but I think you should see the timeline. 1989, informal discussions. 2000, discussed in meetings and special conferences in India. 2002, formal proposal to DAE and MOU signed among participating institutes. 2009, ministry denies permission for the selected site on environmental grounds and suggests a new one. 2010, environmental clearance for the new site obtained from the Ministry of Environment and Forests. 2012, land allocated project to start and be completed by 2015. 2012 to 2017, project did not start. It is stalled due to environmental challenges, including at least some which are completely absurd, like the idea that US is trying to irradiate India with neutrinos, or we are going to store some kind of nuclear radioactive waste, or those things. There are also concerns about animals and uh, so on, which are, which are different. Those are serious, and they have to be taken into account. But some of these are just ridiculous. For the last two years, clearance from Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board is pending. And the most recent development less than a month ago is that the Prime Minister assigned a Cabinet Secretary to monitor INO and has also suggested its name be changed. And if changing its name helps it to run, I'm all for it. But uh, at the moment, this is a sad story of 17 years where scientists have really, really done their best and there's no project. I mean, there's no completed project. Now, I want to show you quickly uh, a contrast from China. Daya Bay is a nuclear reactor which they decided to use to study neutrinos that come out from it. It was, ideas were floated in 2004, proposal 2006, construction 2007. 2012, a key result that is the measurement of neutrino mixing parameter theta 13 was actually published. And in 2016, this collaboration is among the winners of the breakthrough prize in physics, which is a kind of uh, cl close to a Nobel Prize. And this is the paper. It has 1,856 citations, which is a lot, even in high energy physics. That's the reactor. Uh, that's the, sorry, detector. And this is the China success story. And you can see the timeline. Uh, and I, I think we all should really, really care about this fact. OK, now let's look forward. That's the only negative thing. Number of institutes in India involved in HEP experiments has grown rapidly in the last decade. Here's a short list of institutes that are joining. 
It includes new institutes like NICER and us, but also old institutes like IIT Chennai and really, really old institutes like IISC, which uh, as far as I know, many of these older institutes did not have a presence in such mega projects in the glorious 60s when uh, the stuff that I described earlier was going on. It's very good that they've joined and interest is coming from other universities and institutes. Uh, this plays an important role also in outreach. Now, with larger national involvement, we can support multiple themes. It's not like high energy physics is one mega project or even one mega project just wants to do one thing. You need one person to think about dark matter, another person to think about CP violation, person or persons. So, uh, many people is important. And a nice thing is that young students in India are very, very keen to be involved in HEP mega projects. And uh, the mega projects have an enormous need for human resource. That's why CERN and also LIGO, as you'll hear, are really after India because all said and done, the one thing we can say for sure is that we have lots and lots and lots of people. And that's a plus. So it's a perfect match. However, uh, we are nowhere near harnessing that enthusiasm because, in fact, most universities, IITs, ICERs have no presence in HEP to this day. And I'm puzzled by this fact because everything is going in the right direction. Uh, I suspect there are some misconceptions among our science leaders, uh, uh, questions regarding how useful are these goals, who cares about the Higgs boson. You can find the answer, it's available on the internet, or I'll tell you, or Devajyoti, or Shrubhavati, or Rohini, or just about Saurabh, any of the people in the audience are happy to tell you. The skepticism regarding social benefit, and I'll come back to that in a minute. There's some concern about, you know, should we hire faculty in this area because they, they, they co-author papers with 4,000 authors. How can you ever judge them? They'll be traveling all the time. And these, yeah, one more minute is all I need. And these questions all have answers. And some of these answers are provided uh, here in these two papers in Current Science by Viyogi and by myself. Please do read them and look at the answers or just ask us. So here are my concluding remarks. Uh, HEP mega projects have led to dramatic understanding of the constituents of matter, all these neutrinos, heavy leptons, quarks, W and Z bosons, Higgs. They have led to life-changing improvements to society also, and here I must mention the World Wide Web. Now, uh, Ajay is not looking, so I can use 15 seconds more. Um, I want to tell you that this was not even appreciated by CERN. This World Wide Web, by the way, I hope people know the distinction between World Wide Web and Internet. Internet was invented by US military. World Wide Web, which is websites that you can go to, visiting a website, was invented at CERN. And the CERN computing department said that this facility was not the core activity of CERN and was a misallocation of CERN's IT resources. So high energy physicists also can be short-sighted. The guy who did it left CERN for MIT as a result but luckily MIT encouraged him to continue. Now here's the list of social benefits of high energy physics according to the Depart US Department of Energy. It's an amazing list and if you look at this, I would just like you to look at one in detail. Particle detectors first developed for particle physics are now ubiquitous in medical imaging. I think nobody should go around saying that this is some kind of basic, basic elite research which has no application. It has the basic component. It has really, really important path-breaking applications. I wish everybody was clear on this point. And with that, uh, I'm done. Uh, this is basically all I have to say. Uh, but I strongly recommend that institutions, especially when hiring, should take this uh, subject very seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil, for a very comprehensive uh, overview on this.